Tonight's the top of the hour, the deep dark of the night, the demon's hour. A time when boundaries between dimensions are thinnest. Time for communication. Come join us on the helm of the starship that is the T4S as we sit down with the founding clergy, High Priestess Sola Lucky Star and High Priest Black Mamba for a fireside chat. Welcome, fellow travelers. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Demon's Hour. It's nice for you all to be here with us tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, High Priest Black Mambo, for joining us. Thank you. It's nice to be here for another podcast, and I think we're all going to have a great time. I had been thinking about the different ways that demons communicate with us. And, you know, everybody kind of thinks, well, you know... <sighs> If you're really advanced, then it would be like te telepathy. Um, and if, or, or perhaps, you know, if your third eye is really open, then you will have visions of them as well. And, um, if it's anything less than that, then it's kind of, you feel like, um, you feel like you're not really, oh, I don't know what's the word. You know, you feel like almost left out. You feel like, I'm not really getting any real communication and I've, I've had different Satanists tell me how, you know, they, they're just so frustrated because they feel like they're not really getting that communication and they feel kind of inadequate mm. or whatever. But um, the, there's actually more common ways that the demons will make contact with us. And of course there's serendipity and synchronicity. Um, and another way is that they'll speak to us in our dreams. Um, oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, like a lot of times they, I believe it's because when you're wide awake in your physical body, you've got that constantly jabbering away at you, you know, so if something happens and you feel like maybe that was a communication, that stupid voice will speak up. Oh, that's just, you know, it's just a coincidence and, uh, you know, that doesn't mean anything. And, oh, I'm sure that, you know, and it has like a million reasons why not. And mm. the demons would never speak to you or, you know, so when you're sleeping, that that ego mind is sleeping along with your body and it's your it's your intuitional side that is out there and about and so it's easier for them to make a contact and so what i'm what i'm working my way around to is that so many times even so when you're in the dream and your guardian demon or somebody like that comes to you they will actually show up and they will sort of dumb themselves down so that they blend in with your dreams so as not to overwhelm you so like for myself, I have this childhood friend that I, every time I see him, in parentheses, when I see him in my dream, I mm. immediately just identify, it. oh, it's my friend, you know, and, but it's not a big deal, right? And then you wake up later and go, that wasn't my, that wasn't him. Do you know what I mean? And it's usually mm. after I've woken up that I go, oh, that was, oh my God, that was a dress, you know, or... Oh my God, like, but they, I think they do this for a reason. And that's because I'll give you an example, right? Um, I've been behind the scenes when very famous people are about to go out on stage. And when they get out on that stage and the crowd goes wild for them and they, the girls start screaming their heads off. Right. And um, um. now, if a god appears to you like that in your dream, I think that we have that sort of a fan-based reaction where we would just start, we'd be so overwhelmed and so flipped out, oh my god, oh my god, you know, that you wouldn't be able to pay attention to anything that they have to say because you're too busy yelling and screaming and freaking out and crying and going, oh my god, oh my god, you know. So what they do instead is they will appear in our dreams disguised as old friends. Does that 
Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. In that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I'm interrupting you. If you've got something to say, please do. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, um, this is something that I find is very common among people. I can't count how many people have come to me and told me, you know what, how do you hear God? How do you hear these higher dimensional beings? And of course, there's a lot of skeptics out there. There's a lot of people. The one guy told me, are you sure it's just not, are you sure it's not last night's cheese? Speaking yeah, to me, yeah, right, 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 and <laughs> right. You know, um, so yeah, you know, it's it's a very interesting topic because I find, especially among people who are new or people who are searching, you know, or people who come from an atheistic background, they may be a little bit frustrated because they're trying to understand the science around it or they're trying to. Um, think about it rationally, but the thing is, everything about the occult and the paranormal and the supernatural is actually irrational. That's why it's centered around the right hemisphere of the brain. Um, it's actually got to do with your subconscious and your intuition as well, uh, because that's that's the vehicle or the method that we use to tune into these energies. It's interesting. Can you elaborate just a little bit when you say irrational for people? What are you, exactly are you meaning? So you see, you've got your rational mind and you've got your irrational mind, right? You've got your left side of the brain and the right hemisphere. Now, a lot of people who have never really been exposed to, to spirituality, um, especially people who are maybe atheists and they've never really even um, looked into the occult or hypnosis or or anything like this, you know. Um, these people mostly they try to rationalize everything, right? Which is not wrong because even as Satanists, um, we hold near to our hearts the um, how can I say the value of questioning everything and critical thinking. But what makes us different is we apply this to the occult as well, you see. So um, the thing about the the right brain is it's very irrational uh, in the sense that it cannot be things that happen on that level, on that spiritual level, cannot be necessarily put explained into words because sometimes language doesn't have the facilities. To describe mm. the stuff, and um, it cannot necessarily always be expressed tangibly, uh, you know, because the thing is, um, it is in another dimension. So, you know, there are there are there is science behind it, but we have to keep in mind that science has always been held back mm -hmm. um, by the enemy. I mean. You can just look at history, um, what happened in, you know, at one stage in history, Muslim countries were more developed than the Western world, but then Islam took hold there. And since then, it's just been a backward place, you know, because all free thought is punished, all free speech is punished, nobody can criticize anything. So, mm. Of course, sounds, um, sounds like what they're trying to do to us here in North America, but anyway. <laughs> and that's something that worries me, you know, because the thing is, um, once America, America is is like the last place in the world where where you can really be free to say what you want and think what you want and believe what you want. And if that ever goes down, the whole world will plunge into to the dark ages again, you know, it's because of America and freedom that uh, we enjoyed the last centuries of technological advancement, you know, and all right. So anyway, I've diverged, anyway. but basically yes. what I'm trying to say is that, 
it's not wrong to question everything. It's actually encouraged in Satanism. But the thing is, when you come to Satanism and you're trying to move in these different dimensions, in these different realms, you've got to rely on your intuition. That's actually a, a skill that you, it's almost like um, your intuition is almost like an organ that helps you. You know, you've got to rely on that. You've got to learn to use it and train it and mm -hmm. develop it. Yeah. When we were talking, when you were just saying that, it just sort of popped into my head. It's like, you know, that intuitionally, intuitional leaps don't go in a logical sequence the way uh, a logical like building blocks, you know, like if you're building a house and you lay the foundation and you, you know, X, Y, Z, right? But intuition doesn't work that way. Uh, intuition can leap from A to Y and back to C um, and somehow connect and make those connections. And it's a different, um, it's a different way of knowing. There's a sense of knowingness and um, that's, that's really one of the key ways that you'll you'll end, you'll know, like. So you'll wake up and you'll you'll think like for me, you know, I wake up and I go, oh, he was in my dream again, and then I go, wait a minute, that wasn't, I don't want to say his name because he's a real person, but, mm. um, and old very old friend, and you know, and I'll go, oh, he was in my dream again, and then I'll. I'll lay there and I'll like look back over the dream and I'll go, oh, that actually wasn't him. And then that's when I'll, I'll kind of make the connection and go, oh, oh my God, you know, that was one of my guardians or whatever. Yeah, that's interesting. I wanted to give you an example, a couple of examples, actually. So I'm just going to tell you real quick about one dream, right? And at that in this dream, I'm wandering in kind of like a labyrinth, which I do a lot. And there were these big double doors and they opened into this massive kind of a library. Just a really, you know, if you think back to like Victorian era libraries, you know, with the with the ladders on wheels and the books that go all the way up to the ceiling and um, big long tables with lamps at intervals so that you can sit and read and big tall mm. windows, you know, with some um, like this, the sort of transparent curtains on the sides and, and um, it was it was nighttime and there was moonlight out there and the lamps were glowing on these polished wooden tables and the old fashioned, the real kind of bound books, not the ones that are stuck together with glue and the way that they're made now, but real true books that were, you know, created like back in the 18th century, 19th century, when they really knew how to do book binding. Okay, so I walk in there and I'm looking around and on this one wall over a mantle, there's this massive painting and there's a man and he's dressed, you know, the royalty photo, the, the kind of royalty paintings that you see in museums and whatever and they've got the really ornate beautiful clothes you know and it's like 17th like, um, 16th you, century you like from the baroque era um because people in the in the baroque era used to dress immaculately i must say yeah, like really immaculate, where the men wore the, the, the tight pants that stopped at the knees and then they had hose on and then they had this, the they had the, the beautiful shoes with the buckles and, um, mm. you know, lots of frothy lace at the throat and at the wrists and just the big velvet coats and the waistcoats. And so here's this man in the, and he's in a very stylized kind of a stance, you know, and um, he's got like the sword belted around his waist with a big sword there. And, and he's got, he's wearing a cape and everything. And it really got my eye, of course, because I'm a painter, right? I'm an artist. So I stopped in front of the fireplace and I stood there staring at it. And I thought, wow, like, is he ever hot? <laughs> is he ever good looking? Oh my God. And I thought he looks really familiar. And then all of a sudden in the dream, I got lucid and I went, oh, my God. I said, it's Andras. <laughs> I said, Andras, oh, my God. And as soon as I said that, 
the painting animated and came to life and he he had been looking off to the side and and um, somewhere to the horizon you know one of these kind of heroic stylized poses and then when he heard his name called he he, he actually turned his head and looked at me <laughs> and then he smiled and then he actually stepped right out of the painting and joined me oh wow. yeah so that was pretty that was pretty cool um and we had a conversation in the library, right? <laughs> Which kind of sounds like that game that you used to play. What was it? Um, I think it was called Murder, you know, like um, Miss Scarlet did it with a candlestick in the library, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. The, I don't know why that po popped into my head. <laughs> Pluto, and then you've got like Miss Scarlet and Mr. Um, you know, Mr. Mustard and yeah, yeah, Mr. Mustard. <laughs> and then it, you got to find out who who ki who killed, who committed the murder, right? right. Yeah, for some reason, that just, just popped into my head. I don't know why, but um, <laughs> yeah, we're so we're having this discussion in the library. <laughs> so, and a lot of times, um, he, like I said, Sorath or Andres, they represent as this old friend whose name I keep wanting to say, but I won't because he's a real person. But, uh, you know, and then when I wake up, I look back on it and go, oh, my God, <laughs> you know. Um, but, but I think that they do that. They also, what they can do, and this is another sort of ability that they have, right? Because the, uh, if you've done a lot of lucid dreaming, you'll understand what I mean, right? When you're lucid in a dream, you can look around, you can, you could, order the table to change or the lamp to, sh to, to change shape. And if it's made out of the astral dream stuff, it will conform to what you want it to do. However, if it's a, if it's an actual entity that is its own person, you don't control that and it's not going to shift for you. And that's one way you can tell when you're dealing with something that's real or not. If you try, shifting it and it doesn't work it could be because it's actually a real person um, mm. and so what i'm trying to get at is that this this astral medium by somebody that's as powerful as one of the demons <laughs> what they can do is kind of mold the astral think of it as like a molding it into a three-dimensional letter and then they send that to you by priority mail and it, it arrives in your dream and you open it up and the whole thing acts out for you. <coughs> Sorry. And it's, Sorry. that's okay. And the whole thing acts out for you. Um, and that is what I think happened in this one particular dream where I was feeling really bad about some stuff. And um, that time it was Andras and Sorath, and they actually sang this song to me and now I, I've taken a lot of ridicule over this but do I really think that it was like the actual god like literally stepping in there and doing it no I think that it was more like a projection of their minds that they projected it to me sort of like a letter from afar to to make me feel better but instead of written words on a page they actually can um, inscribe their thoughts and whatever they want into the astral and medium and sort of package that up and send it to you like a letter and mm. they sent me and I felt I mean it was fantastic you know it was just it was fabulous and I I woke up and I was just I was so I just felt fantastic you know so I just wanted to be realistic about that though you know I do I believe that it that it was literally like they teleported into my dream and sang that just for me. Well, not literally, but but yeah, I do believe that they sent it like a love letter from afar. Um, mm. And so that's, I believe that that is one way that they do contact. Does that make sense? It makes sense. It makes sense. And here's the thing. I really do think it depends on how much you as an individual are willing to be open to receive messages because that's the thing <clears throat> I remember especially for me when I was new I had this constant battle with my mind because you keep your your logical rational mind keeps questioning but is this them is this legit is this 
real or is this my imagination? And, uh, you know, the thing is, you have to win that battle against your mind. Um, you have to be open to the fact that there are entities in another dimension if you're going to experience them because you have to experience them with your intuition. And the thing is, um, so for a lot of people, it depends on their openness. Some people in the beginning are very open to new things and they're very open to experiment and explore the occult. And for, for me personally, mm -hmm. I think these are, are natural occultists. You know, there are people who, um, who truly, maybe in a past life or something, they were into the occult or something and they're just, it comes to them like a, like a duck goes to water, you know? Right. Uh, so for these people, it's very easy to make contact with these beings and establish contact. But yeah. other people um, who are not as comfortable with using their intuition or delving into the occult, you know, um, and exploring other realms, these kinds of people, the, um, they may have a little bit more difficulty. And for this reason, it may be easier for them to, to use a tool like maybe a pendulum or an Ouija board at first, just so they can learn to trust themselves and to basically train their t intuition to get more in tune with these entities. And of course, um, the biggest asset that you can have is power meditation. Mm. Um, when you meditate, you're basically opening up your mind, you're basically opening up yourself to, to realities from other dimensions. One thing I would heavily discourage is using drugs like DMT because a lot of people speak about DMT entities and meeting them because this drug opened the way for them. But listen, there are so many other reasons why that is not the way to, to go about doing this. Um, I've always been really open and psychic and... <clears throat> I I was approached at one point in my life by a man that ran a like a like you see on television, you know, where they go into like the haunted places and they have all that fancy equipment and um, they film and they they're filming in uh, night vision. Um, I don't know. They're filming in night vision and they go around the castle with the lights out and you know do whatever, right? All that kind of stuff and. I was the, the psychic for that group and he approached mm. me. I didn't approach him. He, he heard of me <laughs> and he approached me and asked to meet me. And we spent a couple hours talking and then he was like, yeah, I'd really like it if you would come on as our team psychic. And I said, okay. And I'd always been interested in that stuff because like everybody else, I was really wondering like, what's, what's really going on there. Right. And, when I first started, I mean, it was a very, very good experience for me because I really learned to trust in my intuition a whole lot more um, when I first started, you know, because what they would do is they would they would go into the, the location, the haunted place, they'd meet the owners, they'd get the tour, they'd get the rundown, they'd set up their cameras and everything while I went. And I was outside the whole time sitting in the in the van and then when they were ready, then one of them would come and get me and then they would just set me loose in the place and I would just roam all over the place and then come back and tell them what I think is going on, you know, um, like that room's the hot spot, this has been happening, that's been happening, you know, that kind of thing. And at first it was really difficult to to do because my my logic side was going, well, who the hell are you to tell these people anything and you can't be sure and, you know, what if you're wrong and and you know all this stuff is you know and yet let me tell you after a while it was really it was very very interesting for me because i just said to myself well you know i'm just gonna say what i think you know what i'm getting and see what happens and i'm telling you like every time actually i was right like i was actually right and it really shocked even me you know <laughs> mm. It really surprised me, you know, um, like like this one place, 
And I said, well, that that place is the hot zone there, and and there there's a lot of poltergeist activity going on in there, and things are being flung down from the top level into the loading bay at the workers, and and they were like, yeah, that's yeah, you know, that's that's what's happening. Um, and so anyway, I'll, I guess what I'm trying to say is that by going out into the real world and opening up that psychicness going into a place and just allowing yourself to pause for a moment and really focus on where you are in that building at that moment and allow the impressions to come to you allow the information to come to you without the censorship that normally happens and it's immediate you know you'll get something and immediately that is in there saying oh that just oh that's probably your imagination you know but just yeah. you know allow allow the information to come to you and get a feel for things like it's amazing what you can pick up and anybody can do it like you can test this out right like if you're out on the street somewhere pick pick somebody out of the crowd that's not looking at you and stare at them and guaranteed within a second or two they're going to look right back at you because they can feel it like we we actually do have these extra senses it's just that it's it's usually buried under a uh under a layer of logic that because the the average regular the day-to-day nine-to-five world that we are living in that most people are living in there is no room for that sort of thing it's completely dismissed you know people are trained to only operate out of one hemisphere of the brain and that's the logic side and that's the ego mind you know that's constantly criticizing and oh that can't be real oh that's probably just your imagination and if you can shut that off and just allow things to come in and get that information to start flowing and then see what you can find out like i'm trying to give you another good example here um there's so many that come to my mind right okay so here's one right i used to volunteer for this organization and i was the last person there on a saturday night and it's three stories of this bill it's in, and the building itself is about 100 years old and it's three stories and when i first started there we only had the, the third story and then later on the people that had the second and first stories were booted out because they were bad tenants and we ended up taking over the building for a while and so i was there late one night and i'm trying to do the um like I have to count, I have to count all the money and I have to like, you know, write down, you know, the logs and whatever. And I have to write all the stuff down and then put it in with the money and, and put it in a safe. And I couldn't find a pen for the life of me. I could not find a pen. And I was looking all around for a pen and going, wow, damn, right. I don't... And I went through my purse that I brought from home and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't even have a pen. So I thought, well, I'm not going to worry about it right at this moment because I still need to do some cleaning in the main studio and blah blah so i thought well i'm going to go do that first so i did the the swiffering of the floor in the main areas and stuff and then i'm now i had just walked past this uh it's like a piece of furniture that's sitting in the hallway and there was nothing on the t- on the surface of it okay absolutely nothing i know that because i cleaned it I, I i swept it all off and cleaned it now then i passed it you know did the did the floor in the main studio and then I'm coming back and I looked I looked casually at this piece of furniture again and there's a pen like somebody left it there for me on the on the top of the the dresser right and mm-hmm. it wasn't there it wasn't there you know so I picked up the pen and I said awesome thank you <laughs> you know and then I went mm-hmm. and um you know did the did the bookkeeping blah 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 locked all this stuff in the safe and i thought okay i'm gonna i still have to you know take care of the dishes and stuff and that's up down on the second floor so and i thought well the first floor you could really tell you could really tell the energy in the building um the place where we had been for at least a year year and a half or something really beautiful clean pure clear energy up there and then as you descended through the building by the time you hit the first floor it was really dense and uh, not as nice and everybody was aware of it and so we had an altar set up on the main floor 
So I went to the altar and I lit up some incense. And I said in my mind, a satanic sort of a blessing. And I turned around and there was a man standing right behind me. <laughs> and he gave me quite a start. Oh. Yes, he gave me quite a start because I was alone in the building. The building was totally locked up and I'm alone in the building. And here's a man. He's five feet away from me and he's as solid looking as, as you can imagine. And I turned around and I hardly had time to react because my first thought was, holy, you know, bleep. I thought I was alone in here. How did he get in? Who is this guy? And I was just about to open my mouth and demand, like, what the F are you doing in here, right? <laughs> How did you get in here? Like, you're not even supposed to be in here. And just at that moment, before I was opening my mouth to give him holy hell, because I wasn't scared, I was pissed off. Well, okay, he startled me, and I was pissed off because he scared me. <laughs> and so I was mostly pissed off. And I was just opening my mouth to give him hell. And then he just kind of like drifted apart like smoke like like a fog like it's really hard it's kind of hard to even describe it but he just kind of disintegrated right in front of me and turned into like particles and then they vanished and then i realized that it had been a, a ghost right and his That's projection very his you know a lot of people would be creeped out by that but his projection oh, hold that mm -hmm. thought his projection was so strong that like he looked absolutely alive like you couldn't see through him he looked like a real guy and then he just like uh, became transparent and just kind of broke apart into a million pieces and was gone in a matter of a couple seconds you know and out loud i said i said god damn it i said don't do that to me <laughs> i said thanks for the pen i said but don't do that kind of shit to me. Like, don't do that. I said, you just, you probably just took a year off my life, man. You really startled me, right? I said, don't sneak up on me like that. I said, I don't, I don't like that, right? I'm not down with that. And I shut off the lights and then I forced myself to walk back up the stairs in the dark and, and up back up to the second floor. And it was, yeah, yeah, it was a little spooky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, a lot of people who come into into spirituality and start having these experiences. In the beginning, it can be very overwhelming and scary, even frightening. You know, but once you once you get into the habit of things, you know, because this this stuff starts happening quite regularly. Yeah. Um, it doesn't phase you anymore. It's you know stuff that would freak other people out to you it's just like normal oh, well that's another, that's just another day in my life you know and yeah. to give it's an really, example it is really normal and i don't like i wasn't screaming and running out of the building and you know i went ahead and i gathered up all the dishes and i took them and washed them and you know cleaned up and everything like usual and and locked the place up and left you know and it wasn't like a big deal and i told him don't mm -hmm. don't don't F with me like that, man. I said, just don't do that again. And he didn't. Of most, course, of them, of course. most of them won't, you know, like most of them, they're just trying to get your attention. You know? Like they're, you know, they can see you, but they, but you, we can't see them. And it's, imagine how frustrated you'd feel, you know? <laughs> I guess it depends as well, because it depends with the kind of entity that you're dealing with. You know, you always have sure. to be careful. Sure. So most of the most of the good entities won't. But just to clarify, I want to say that there are entities out there that will do, that are malicious. Totally. You, you got to be for them as well. Totally. But That's just, absolutely you, true. Mm, I just want to give you some those too. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I've gotten. I could tell you story after story after story after story, like of stuff. You know, I mean, we got lots of stuff I can tell you in the demons hours to come but uh, you wanted to make an example I don't know I just wanted to share some experiences as mm. well that I've had um, with poltergeist activity and otherworldly beings the one time I was meditating this was about during the time the year 2016 I still remember it so vividly and I was just sitting in my room and meditating and I heard a thud. I just heard, you know, like a big thud. 
Mm. And what happened was right at the back of my closet, on the very top shelf, right at the back, I had um, some candles, which I always used for rituals and stuff, some new candles. Yeah. And one candle somehow came out of the packaging and rolled all the way to the fr front of the shelf and fell down. <laughs> now, first of all, to remove mm. candle from the packaging, that's not something that can just happen. You know what mm. I mean? It has to, someone has to literally remove it from the packaging to get a candle out there. Second of all, there was the shelf was totally um, flush. It was totally level, right? So mm. there was no slope or anything for and then aside from that the candles were packed way in the back and then in front of the candles there were boxes files books so there was no way for a candle to roll out of the um, closet it had it had to be levitated out for it to to fall out of the closet hmm. and you know i just saw this candle lying because i heard a thud and i woke you know, it kind of like startled me out of my meditation and I saw this candle mm. hanging on the floor. Yeah. And I immediately knew that this is not a natural thing. This is supernatural because there is no way that that candle. And just another example, well, I was- Somebody wanted to get your attention. Again, yeah, something or someone, you know, but I was, this was two years later, I was lying on the floor in a different, in a whole different house, in a different place, and I was meditating, and on my table, right in the corner of the room, right-hand corner, uh, I had a file lying on my desk. Now this file was pushed all the way back against the wall. It was right in the middle of my desk. And mm. I was lying three meters away from the desk. And I was just lying on the floor meditating. And all of a sudden I felt a breeze over my face and I heard a, a strong thud, like, like a doof, you know, like a smack next to my head. Mm. And this Thing, levitated the file off of my desk and dropped it right mm -hmm. next to my head, right? Oh, right next to your head. <laughs> right next to your head. That's where the, where the wind came from because it's the, from, the, from the drop, you know? <laughs> there is no Somebody way. Somebody wanted you know, your if that, <laughs> if that file were to, um, and there was no wind in the room, there Good was nothing like that. You didn't drop it on your head. <laughs> yeah, you know, and the thing is, um, there is no way that the file could have gotten there because yeah, I just it love was that. too far. Hey, no, I get, yeah, no, I just, I just love that stuff. I just like for me, this kind of stuff is if it if something paranormal doesn't happen, you know, if I'm kind of going, what's wrong here? <laughs> yeah, and you know, the thing is, um, <laughs> the beginning, this was would have freaked me out. But at that time, I was already at the point where I was experiencing so many paranormal, supernatural things on a daily basis that this didn't faze me anymore. That's right. Yeah, no, it, it just doesn't after after a while. And that that's something else um, that you t that you touched on there, where you said that there was a breeze where there shouldn't have been any breeze. Um, th these are these are also indications of, of uh, I don't know entities or ghosts or whatever you want to call it, but there'll be a there'll be a breeze where there where there shouldn't be one that will brush past you. Um, sometimes it's lights, lights like um, really bright lights. Sometimes then they'll just kind of flare up in your peripheral and then and then they're gone again. Or sometimes they're not in the peripheral; they're actually like right in front of you. And like for example, lights on your altar. If you have an altar and you're sitting and you're meditating in front of your altar. Uh, you'll suddenly see these flashes of light coming from the altar, and that's an indication that, that somebody's there. And what was another one? Um, let's see. The wind, the lights. I didn't feel a breeze brush past me. What actually happened was 
the breeze that I felt was from the folder, the file that was sitting on my desk, dropping next to my head. And okay. that's what made the whole experience so strange because there was absolutely no wind or breeze in the area. So there's nothing that okay. could have lifted the file. And it's not round, so it couldn't have rolled. You know what I'm saying? Somebody literally had to levitate it, carry it over to where I was lying on the floor, and drop it next to me. Right, and there but... was nobody in the room. There was nobody even in the house at the time. I was sure. alone in the house. Sure, so... but, but you did put it into my head, and I just wanted to throw it out there, because that is actually something. Like you'll, Sometimes you'll feel a breath of a breeze brush past you. Oh, yes, um, sometimes there's cold spots. And that's that's an indication either that something was there or that a portal is open there. You know, a lot of people who are open to spirituality may also even have problems in the beginning because even me, I was very I was experiencing a lot of psychic things before I came to Satanism. And even after I came to Satanism, I still had trouble being open, you know. And mm -hmm. the reason why is because the system that we live in is continually indoctrinating you that, um, you know, there is no afterlife, there is no other world. If there is, you should be afraid of it, you know? And so subconsciously, people have a lot of hurdles that they have to get past and face before they could actually be comfortable enough to be open, you know? And I think power meditation, is the best way to open yourself up because you're exploring your mind. Here's the thing. I also just want to add this because I'm, I know that there's a lot of skeptics listening to this podcast mm. and they're like saying, oh, yeah, well, it's in your imagination, all of this. Yeah. <laughs> and to these skeptics say, you know, that's what makes the T4S different from other ministries. We're actually, we welcome all sects of Satanism to to come and congregate or just, you know, to be part of our community. And if you are from one of those atheistic sects of Satanism and you're listening to this and rolling your eyes at what we're saying, I just want to say that even if you don't believe in spirituality, you've got nothing to lose by meditating because even if there's no afterlife in spirituality, if you meditate, you're still harnessing the full potential of your mind. You're you're focusing your mind, you're training your mind. And Satanism, regardless of whether you're theistic or from an atheistic sect, um, regardless of all of that, Satanism is about using your mind to the fullest potential, becoming the cleverest, best person you can be. So even yeah. then, you should still meditate, even if you don't believe in spirituality, just to get the full potential of your mind. Right. Um, but I just wanted to go back to, okay, so like there's wind that shouldn't be there. There's lights that can appear either in your peripheral or um, in front of you, like say on your altar, there's objects being moved or moving. Um, sometimes it's also like you'll hear like, you'll hear like a voice. Um, and no, this isn't like schizophrenia where it's like voices in your head. It's it. You know what your own mental voice sounds like. I'm talking a completely different person. Um, and you'll hear, you'll hear, you might hear that. Sometimes you'll feel a touch, like, a, and it feels like an actual physical hand. I'm trying to think of, of different, um, for example, when I, thing, thing also is like, for example, yeah, you can walk into a store and hear music playing and it doesn't mean anything, okay, but Sometimes you might be somewhere and a song will suddenly start up and you'll feel it in your gut, in your solar, and you will know, you'll have the sense of knowingness that that is for you. It's almost like the DJ, the, the, the God that's playing the song, the DJ is going, this song's for her. Yeah, <laughs> that song is for you. Like, listen, you know, and if you go and look up the lyrics later, you might find that message in the lyrics. Um, so that's that's rather... I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. Um, but look, you, you mentioned that you know what your own voice sounds like, and it's not always your own voice. And that's true in some of the cases. But I have found 
that there are situations where a lot of people may get confused between their own voice and the telepathic voice of another entity. Um, and mm. I just want to give once again another example of this. This happened back in 2017. You know, I was going through the stage where I had all of these negative thoughts. And these thoughts were just coming into my head like, I'm worthless, I'm nothing, mm -hmm. like this. You know, it was just a constant barrage of thoughts. And then I got this inside of me. I got this feeling, what if this isn't me thinking this? And you know what happened? I started realizing there was an entity outside of me, a gray alien projecting thoughts into my head using the same pitch and tone of my telepathic voice in my mind, sure. my mind voice. And here's what happened. It uses, it was so clever, it used the article I, me, yeah. myself, yeah. so that I would just, because, and this is what I'm saying, in Satanism you've got to question everything. When you're working with these realms and spirituality, you've okay, got to question everything. But mm -hmm. but 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 your your sudden realization of what this really was was probably coming through your gut. Well, yes, um, it was coming through my intuition. But for a long time, for three months, I was struggling with these thoughts. And here's what happened: the thing is, um, you got to question yourself and even your own thoughts when you're working with spirituality because. Um, it's just because I questioned and I said, is this really me thinking this? And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden a light bulb went on my head. And this entity, let me tell you, he was so clever using my own, because in your mind you've got what I call a telepathic voice or a mind voice. It's your yeah, inner that's, voice. That's what I'm right? saying. Yeah, you've got your own and, voice. And this thing was actually using, projecting thoughts in my, in my mind and I was just accepting Mm -hmm. that these are thoughts right because he he was so clever he put i me myself in front of the thoughts mm -hmm. and then i was accepting it and here's what happened as soon as i i realized this i started void meditation and i just started every time i get a negative thought i would just void my mind and mm -hmm. one day a week later on a tuesday i was sitting there and void meditating and i felt an electric shock goes through my head and I looked around and there was a finger, a big long gray finger over my head. And he had actually used this finger to touch my head and put thoughts in it. And mm. I broke that link. Right. And that, um, I'm, I'm going to just jump off from that one because that, that made me, okay. I was really lucid dreaming, like, uh, you know, especially, oh God, there was this period of about 12 years where uh, I was lucid dreaming, like five nights out of seven. And then, uh, then long story. But anyway, so this one night, uh, it was just the wildest night I've ever experienced because I'm laying in bed, totally awake, I shut my eyes, open them again, and I'm in this astral, I'm in the dream time. And you could tell because the room has shifted. It's I'm still in my bed, but not everything is exactly the same as it was. It's pretty close, but there's new elements, right? And I'm looking around, and and there's like a hole in my wall, and there's somebody kneeling in in the with their backside sticking into my room, and they're they're they they're, they've got their head in the hole, and there's there's people in the room, and I'm and. I'm thinking, what the, because I still feel completely awake, you know, I mean, if you're just laying in bed and you blink your eyes and suddenly you're somewhere else, right? And so I blink my eyes again and open them and then I'm back in my regular bedroom and then I blink and I'm back in the dream and this didn't last just for like a very short time. It went on for like probably five or six hours and until I could no longer um, I felt like I was going to go insane because I couldn't wake myself. And I was trying really hard by then. I was going, just wake up, okay? Just wake up and stop this right now. Stop it. You know, wake up. I couldn't wake up. I couldn't snap out of it. I was stuck there in this 
astral whatever in my bedroom and and flipping back and forth between these two realities and both of them are seemingly as completely solid and real and and then i suddenly thought well who the fuck is doing this to me and i felt this sensation i can't explain it like like a like the pinpoint of of a of an energy and it was in the bedroom doorway and that's when i finally looked and there was a tall gray standing in the bedroom doorway and i immediately felt this absolute rage tear through me i was so angry i was like you m effer you know I didn't invite you in. I didn't invite you in here, you piece of shit, because it suddenly everything came together. And I thought this thing has been playing with you for the last five hours. And, you know, trying to make you crazy, right? Like, like trying to completely mess with your mind to the point where you, you can't even tell anymore when you're awake or when you're asleep, you know, like just and enjoying the confusion and the terror, right? Because it was really scary. I mean, just imagine if you're mm. flipping back and forth between these two dimensions with no breaks in your consciousness and, and both of them seem completely 100% real. You're just like, oh, my God. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, am I going nuts? Like, what's what's going on? And and then all of a sudden, you know. So anyway, I got really angry. I jumped out of the bed, flung myself across the room at it and body slammed him out into the hallway and slammed him into a wall. And I felt this thought coming from it. And that thought was like, it was completely shocked that I could see it. It wasn't expecting that. Mm. Like what I, you know how you'd, you'd mentioned before in a different, um, I think it might've been T4S TV. And you'd mentioned something about that. That's one thing about us humans that they can't handle because we're so unpredictable. Right. And so that was the feeling that I got from this gray was like, it never expected to be caught. It didn't think I could see it. And it sure as heck didn't expect to be tackled. <laughs> you know? And um, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, uh, it immediately like teleported itself away. And it was gone. And suddenly, boom, I was able to wake up. And I woke up. And oh my gosh, you know. And I, I got out of bed. And I'm like, oh my god, that was crazy. <sighs> right? And... Um, I went to the kitchen uh, window and I and I opened up the window and I was looking out at the sun, at the sun coming up in the clouds and there were all these uh, gods in the clouds like I could see their faces and and um, it was really really beautiful and it was seemed like such a contrast to the terrible darkness and terror of the night and then suddenly it's the dawn and the clouds are lighting up and they were taking on the forms of these giant people in the clouds and. They were beautiful, beautiful people, and these were the gods, you know, and I was looking at them, and I was crying, and I said, oh, my God, I said, you know, I wish there was somebody here right now that I could talk to about this. I wish that there was somebody I could talk to. So, fast forward many years, I've dedicated to Satan, and I was talking to another Satanist, and they said, oh, by the way, um, Sorath wants me to tell you something, and I went, uh, okay, <laughs> and they said, they said, they described that morning when they said, do you remember when you were looking out the window at the, at the faces and the bodies in the clouds and you said out loud that you wish that there was someone that you could talk to about this? And I said, I had to think about it for a minute. And then I went, yes. <laughs> he said, he said, he's telling me to tell you that I was there and I was saying to you, you can talk to me. <laughs> um. Wow, and, that's so beautiful. Well, and the thing is that that this person had no way to know because I'd never told him that story. I'd never told him about that. It never even occurred to me to tell him about that. And somehow he described what happened to me, and that had happened okay. years before, and um, even what I'd said. And then he's saying that my guardian demon is is telling him to tell me I was there, and I was I was there saying you can talk to me. Uh, anyway, so, you know, you do get confirmations. You do get confirmations. One last real quick one, because we're starting to run out of time here. I just wanted to share some thoughts on what you just said, you know, okay. um, about slamming that alien. And the mm -hmm. thing is, um, 
this is the thing. As soon as you start meditating, as soon as you start becoming open, you become a threat to them. Because like you said, he didn't think that you can see him. And this is the last thing that they want. They don't want human beings to be aware because they want to control our mind. They want to tell us what to think. What? They want to show us how to live our lives so that we can be good slaves for them. And that a few, um, because they, these entities are, are very evil. And the thing is, as soon as you say, look, I'm going to start meditating. I'm going to start opening up my mind. I'm going to start being open to other dimensions and advancing my mind and powers of my mind. I refuse to be manipulated by their message and indoctrination and their tactics. You become an extreme threat to them and they will do anything to stop you. They will send people on your path to tell you to stop meditating. They will, um, all kinds of things will happen because they don't want you waking up and, you know, fighting them. That's right. And actually, these nasty aliens are the ones that are actually the real power that's like behind the Vatican and behind um, everything that's going on. And they have a select group of, oh, I don't know, like the, the house slaves, and they're the ones that actually run stuff. And you think that those people are the problem, but actually they're being run by these non-human entities. And I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, but I, I just want to bring this around full circle one more time back to, um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to open yourself up and um, sense and feel and start to exercise that part of your brain, uh, I just wanted to say that, you know what, like the universe will conspire with you to send you confirmations. And I wanted to give you a really quick example of that. So one thing that, like, I, like I'd mentioned much earlier in this segment, and I said, you know, like real world practice, right? Like go out into the real world and try walking into a secondhand bookstore or, or secondhand furniture place or just walking down the street in a new neighborhood and just open, open that, just imagine yourself kind of opening up and then start allowing yourself to, to really feel and sense like, what information is coming to you and I was riding my bike excuse me I was riding my bike down this one street and it's kind of a more industrial zone not a lot of houses in this area lots of weeds you know growing up in this cracks in the sidewalk and I kind of liked that though because it was a little bit off the beaten path and quiet and these uh, industrial kind of buildings have been around for like 60 70 80 years you know, there's a lot of history in those buildings, a lot of people coming and going, a lot of, um, you know, activity, human activity. So as I'm wheeling the bike along, I was practicing this, what I was talking about, where I'm walking along and I'm just opening and I'm just allowing impressions. And so I'm walking past this warehouse and it had these great big windows at intervals on the second hand story. And the windows, it looked like an abandoned building. And the windows had uh, boards in them, you know, and um, instead of grass or lawn, it had like, you know, overgrown weeds and stuff, right? It didn't look like anyone was there. And yet, I'm looking up at this building and all of a sudden in my head, I got pictures of of uh, women, young women, uh, and that there were a series of rooms up there and that they, they had um, beds up there and these women were actually chained to the beds and... They were like captives up there and they were running like a prostitution ring out of there. And like John's just coming and going. It was just a vile, just a vile series of images that went through my head. And because at the time I was still new, I guess, I don't know, more, less experienced, let's put it that way. And I didn't really understand. And so I thought, well, what kind of a pervert are you to be thinking things like that? And then I thought, like, ew, like, that's disgusting. Why would you even think that? And I kind of dismissed it. But, gee, the universe sent me confirmation. Just two weeks later, I happened to flip on the 6 o'clock news. And one of the top stories of the hour, they flashed to this uh, building. And, it, and I recognized it. It was the one I'd gone past with the boarded up windows. And they said, 
police raided this building at five o'clock in the morning where they discovered a series of rooms with uh, women chained to the beds and that they'd been operating this uh, ring out of there. And I just about fell out of my chair. Um, so the thing is that this is this is a very natural sort of a ability that people have and, and it behooves you to try to cultivate it because I'll tell you, you never know when that extra bit of knowledge could save your life. Look, you know, if you want to be really practical about this and, and you, maybe you, you're kind of rolling your eyes and going, oh my God, you know, and they really believe this stuff. But you know what? I'm telling you, if you learn to develop this faculty of your mind, it is going to serve you in so many practical ways and it will, it can literally save your life. And if for no other reason than that, because sometimes, you know what, because you are open, information comes to you and you're warned away from this situation or that situation. And if you listen to it, you find out later that it's a damn good thing that you did. And so if for no other reason, you you know, if you want to develop your faculties of sensing and being able to get in touch with this other plane of existence, I guess is a good way to put it and develop that communication with uh, other beings. I think that that by itself is definitely well worth it just for that alone. Um, it's certainly saved me many times, more times than I can even count. And and then just as a, as you had said, High Priest Black Mambo, like don't, don't go too far the other way and be like, everything is, is an attack from the enemy, you know, like, oh, I dropped my phone on the floor. It's an, en- it's an enemy attack. You know what I mean? Some people will go, some people will go way too far off into the blue that way as well. So, you know, you want to, you want to find that happy medium. You want to still stay grounded and question things, but you also want to um, not allow that ego brain side the logic side to drown out the intuition side with its constant barrage of was that just your imagination oh i'm not really sure you know i need more proof than that because you got to listen to your gut you you really listen to your gut because the gut is never wrong and that there's a reason why we have that saying and it's true so i think that's my final word on it um Mm. i agree with you don't go looking for an enemy behind every bush (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but also don't, yeah, you know, it's, it's like a health, it's like everything, right? There's a healthy balance to things. So, and, and also don't spend so much time trying to make contact with the astral that you forget to live your life in the physical. That's not healthy either. Okay. So I don't recommend, you know, constantly meditating and never, ever doing anything physical. That's not, that's not the point of it. I mean, you know, you're here in a physical body for a reason and you're here to learn and develop and grow and you you do that while you're in a physical body. But through um, generations of Christianity and Islam, um, a lot of our faculties have been shut down and so uh, they need to be they need to be redeveloped. It's kind of like a, a limb that's coming out of a cast, you know, and and at first it's really weak. And you have to start exercising it. So, you know, there's simple things you can do. And one of them would be yoga. And another one would be try try to meditate even 10 minutes a day. Okay. Like something. And um, try what I said, you know, like being out there in the real world and just practicing sensing. And then, you know, you can try that when you're trying to read tarot for somebody else. Because half of half of the tarot reading is really about opening up like that so that you're sensing and you're making those intuitional leaps like A to Y to Z and then back to C, you know. Um, that's what happens when you're, when you're reading with the tarot. You open yourself and suddenly that whole kaleidoscope of, of, of cards will fall into a, into a pattern and you can read the, the pattern for somebody and that's actually what you're doing when you're giving them a really good reading. Yeah, so when you're, when you're reading and, and you're opening yourself up and the cards are sort of jumbled, but then like a kaleidoscope, they'll fall into a pattern and then that's how you read. Um, being able to read the situations around you in the real world like that, 
allows these things to fall into a pattern and you'll suddenly discern information that is not available on the sort of surface level of things. You'll be able to tell if somebody's lying to you. You'll be able, you know, there's a lot of things that you'll be able to tell and these things can be incredibly helpful. So there is a practical side to this. That's what I guess I'm getting at. And um, if for no other reason, I hope that some people out there will find this interesting and will want to actually start to try. And so for those of you that do, uh, satanic blessings on your road and all the best to you. And yeah, come on, come on down by our forums and, you know, um, if you have questions, you can talk to other, other people that are interested in these things as well there. Yeah, we're getting very close to the top of the hour here. High Priest Black Mamba, do you have any other thoughts or anything that you would like to, you know, say? I just thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, thank you for listening to the information that we are working so hard to get out there to the public, to the internet. Uh, thank you for those who support us by sharing our stuff on social media and for those who who are supporting us in other ways we are very grateful for that you know this ministry it's about it's about you guys the listeners the community you know the people in our temples um, it's about you guys and we are very grateful for you Soon we're going to be launching an online store and we will have a link to the store on our website soon. So on the store you can get ritual items, magical items, there's services like tarot readings, astrology readings. Uh, feel free to go check it out and we hope to see you again soon for another podcast. I had a good time with you today. I think we covered some very interesting material and there's actually a wealth of information. We could actually do several podcasts just on this topic. With that said, I think that's all I wanted to say, except uh, thanks for being here and thanks for your time, Black Mamba. And thanks to everyone listening. See you guys next time. Hey, we'll see. Till the next time we see you back here, you know, look after yourselves out there and hail Satan. Bye for now.